Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. We are currently filming the 2022 Adventures with Andy Halloween Mega Venture and we just finished dyeing some yarn for it. But we have all of this dye left over. Now I can't let it all go to waste, especially since other than this black dye here, the rest of it is fluorescent. That's right, we've got some Jacquard Acid Dye Jet Black. We have some Dharma Trading Company Fluorescent Safety Orange, Fluorescent Lemon Yellow, Purple Pop, and Fluorescent Fuchsia. So, spur of the moment, we are going to use this skein of wool to dye for zebra four ply yarn. This is 100% Highland wool, non superwash. It is 100 grams and we are going to cram jar dye it into a mason jar. Cram jar dyeing was Chad's choice. Right Chad? It was. It was. All right. So how are we going to layer these? Oh, I stumped him y'all. I stumped him. I guess start with a little black maybe? What do you think? Sure we can do that. Now one thing to bear in mind is that if you cover a fluorescent dye with non-fluorescent dye, like the black, it's not going to be fluorescent anymore. But I don't know if it goes the other way. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes with the black sections of this yarn. But even if it's not fluorescent on the black sections, and even if some of this black dye makes parts of it not fluorescent, I still think it's going to look really cool because I really like the look of fluorescent colors mixed with black. I just think that looks so cool. So we're going to start with that clump of xanthan gum. Okay. Don't worry. We're going to start with a little of the black and then, and this yarn is currently dry. I have not soaked it or anything. I wasn't expecting to have dye left over and I just told Chad, well, run upstairs and grab me a skein of that zebra yarn. And... Is it going to fit in? I hope so. I've never had a problem with it before with yarn. And the reason I'm using gloves, um, none of this dye is toxic. You want to use a respirator and safety goggles when you're mixing up the dry dye powder into a dye stock. Um, or if you're using it for sprinkling or anything. Um, once it's in a liquid form, it's non-toxic. You don't want to drink it, obviously, but getting on my skin is not going to hurt me. It will, however, stain my hands. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. I want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm going to put in... Purple pop? I believe this is the purple pop. is the fluorescent fuchsia. Come on, go in there for me. You can go in there more than that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Once it gets wet, it scrunches down a lot more. Okay. And I'm going to put in I'm going to flip this over this way this time. Put in the rest of the black. Yeah, see why I'm wearing gloves? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not blaming you. That's right. This is the safety orange. I'll put in about half of it. Flip this over to this side, put in the rest of it. I stained my board. This is why Chad has the board out. I'm going to put the rest of this in here, squeeze it in as best I can. 
And then this is the lemon yellow. As you can tell, it's yellow right there. Put the lid on here real quick, just for a moment. So we got so far, it's pretty cool already, isn't it? All right, we're gonna let this sit for just a minute. Over there, out of the way. While I get our yarn mop. Yes, we actually had a yarn mop for the dyeing that we were doing. Um, <laughs> it's already taken up a bunch of color. This is not its first round as a yarn mop. This is its fourth round as a yarn mop. You can see it's got a lot of color on it. And first I'm gonna dab up this if I can. Nope, wood soaked it up already. All right, so I'm just gonna take this, see if I can find a clean-ish area that doesn't have a lot of color on it. Not that end. Not that end, not that end. How about right here, here in the middle, that's good. A lot of color still on that paintbrush. Oh, I guess we had a second one with black, maybe. Or I wonder if that was the purple or something. I guess the purple. It needs more purple. Always need more purple. You can never have enough purple, can you? Never have too much purple. Some that's some color. I think that's the fuchsia. fuchsia. Yeah. It's nice. Mm-hmm. I've already done that one, haven't I? Hmm? I've already done that one, haven't I? Mm -hmm. Forgot already, y'all. Have you? You got the extra little bit there. Yeah. yeah, that's right. looking forward to when this is all done I can show you all what it looks like like I said this is like the fourth video that has been a yarn mop for or at least the fourth time it's been a yarn mop one time was mixing up dyes so it's going to go back over here into its bucket of citric acid water to sit until we're ready to set it oh, all right which means now we need to put some water in here. Right, Chad? I guess so, yeah. We do, we've let this sit for a little bit and it's it's soaking up the dye, but we want some more water in here. It's gonna need more than this. And it's gonna need our acid component. Remember, we haven't had that yet. So, steal some of the water from our yarn mops bin. There's like next to no color in it. You, it's just the faintest pink, I don't think you can even see it on camera, but it does have citric acid. Oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Wait a minute, I met myself. Yes, I can. I can totally believe I just did that. See, we've still got some areas here on the side where it's dry. And I want to 
Try to get enough water in there to get that wet. Spread the color around. That's right. Yeah. All right, that's all the water that we're going to be able to fit in that jar. So now we will... And a little bit extra squeezes out. Of course it does. There's a reason Chad put this wooden board here. You can see I've already destroyed the gorgeous paint job he did on my table. It looks so nice. Now we're just going to let this sit for a while. A couple of days at least. Let that dye move around. And then we'll put it in the crock pot, the heat set it. See how it turns out. Y'all want to see something cool? Look at that. Look at how it glows. Oh, that is so awesome. And I'll keep going behind it. You okay to actually see that? <laughs> no. But look at that. Ooh. The, oh, and we even got some on the bottom. Oh my gosh. So cool. Our little mason jar of yarn has been sitting overnight. And now we're gonna go ahead and heat set it. So I've got it in the crock pot. There's a little bit of water in here. It's just room temperature. It's actually kind of cool because we're out in the garage and it is very hot. Life in the South, y'all. Um, but we did just heat up some water in the electric kettle to boiling. So, Chad, if you would not mind pouring that in for me, please. There's no Chad. This is Halloween. It's a disembodied hand pouring your water. Oh! Ooh, spooky. And would like to know how much water you want. Just go ahead and pour it all in. Okay. Yo. All right. That is fairly hot. And somebody poured it over the top, which is now fairly hot too. Not scalding, just definitely noticeably hot. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna put the lid on this and we will plug in the crock pot. Leave this in here with the crock pot on high for about 15, 20 minutes. And then it should be ready to cool down, we'll wash and run so we can show you what we got. And here's our finished yarn. I think this looks really pretty cool. I, I love that we got stripes here without even trying. It's just how it worked out with the way it was crammed in there that yeah, we've got stripes of brown and pink. I think the brown is from the orange and did we have any green in there? Did we have what? We didn't have any green in there, did we? No, because we were out of the, um, yeah. we were out of that green. Well, what was that green? I forget. But we, were, we had used it all <laughs> yeah, for it, something else. It must be from the black. Yeah. The, the, this has got to be maybe the, the fuchsia and the black mixing together to make this brown color. But yeah, it's just, I think that's really cool. <laughs> um, we've obviously got really bright colors here with the yellow and a little bit of that fluorescent safety orange that, that we poured up here at the top. And then down here, we've got darker colors because that's where we had some of that black to layer over and deepen the colors. And we do actually have some places where it's still just white yarn. I gotta tell you, I had a flash moment of panic as we were setting this when I realized, oh wait, this is not superwash yarn and I have crammed it all into a jar and gotten it wet and I'm subjecting it to heat. And that is a recipe for felting it. I have expected to pull this out and it just be a lump of yarn. <laughs> Return to sheep. Yeah. Fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, it's, it's the nature of this yarn that it's always kind of clingy, clings to itself, grabs itself. Um, but yeah, it's not felted at all. It's pretty much exactly like it does when it comes out of the package. So whew, I was breathing a huge sigh of relief on that one, y'all. I was like, what was I thinking? Think better, Andy. 
Gonna make some snazzy yarn, that's what you were thinking. <laughs> oh, now I gotta say, I love the mix of the bright colors in with the black, especially like right here, like this strand here. We get just some absolutely gorgeous barber pulling here. And I just, I love that. I really do. I, it makes me want to get just some black and white barber pulled yarn and just dye it like this because that's so pretty. And yeah, I, I love that. We got that in pretty much all of the colors. I think it looks really good. Yeah? Yeah. Because, you know, it was your idea to do cram jar dyeing. No, well, it's because we had a jar and yarn. <laughs> they seem to go together. Yeah. But no, I do like this. This even looks a little bit like caution tape or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, the whole thing, I mean, I know we were working with autumn colors and Halloween colors and stuff like that for the most part, right? Or fluorescent, but... We were working with fluorescent, leftover fluorescent dye. Yeah. But I, I think it has a, I don't know, gives off a very 80s cyberpunk vibe. I can see that. You could see somebody, you know, with a multicolored, you know, rooster comb haircut mm -hmm. come, come walking in the room right now wearing their mirror shades and yep. got nice. their cyber deck ready to jack in. Yeah, I can totally see that. But then, of course, the question is, how does it work up? That's a good question. That's a very good question. It works up like this. So you got stripes all the way across this time. Yeah. Now, normally when I do a swatch with the zebra yarn, the black only comes partially across. But this time, because of the brown, it's like it carries it all the way across to, to give sort of this optical illusion of black stripes and lighter colored stripes. And that's kind of cool. That really is. But yeah, I was not expecting it to basically be stripes like this. I was expecting lots of color stacking. I think it turned out neat. Um, and, uh, in a lot of areas where you have like the dense magenta or pink mm -hmm. and everything, they, it gets really dispersed throughout mm -hmm. the... Yeah, it really does. By comparison, this is a skein that we dyed with green. And you can see those black stripes don't go all the way across. They basically do a zebra pattern, hence the reason it's called zebra yarn. So yeah, this is just a faux effect happening here with the brown continuing it all the way across. Mm -hmm. Same stitch count, needle size, all Yeah, that. yeah. These are both 30 by 30 squares on the US 4. And Interesting. They, they actually go together. Are you wanting me to knit you something out of these two skeins of yarn? No, that's okay. Okay, but... good, because I wasn't planning on it. <laughs> so if we're going to do the fluorescent test, mm -hmm. see exactly how much this fluoresces. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I, I am. Now, I have seen what this looks like under a black light. Chad has not. Now, if you remember, one of the things I said is that if you dye yarn with fluorescent dye and then over dye that with non-fluorescent dye, it's not going to fluoresce. This is what I have been told by other dyers. I've never tried it myself because this is the first time I've dyed with fluorescent dye. Um, but I didn't know whether dyeing black or a dark color over dyeing that with a fluorescent color if that would fluoresce. So like these sections here and here where we've got the barber Down pulling there. of the black and white mm -hmm. and we've got the magenta that it's not going to have just dyed on the white part of that yarn. It's going to have gone onto the black as well. So we don't know would that fluoresce or not. Chad, do you have any hypotheses? I think it will. Yeah? At least, well, I guess, I say I, say I think it will, but I'm, I'm imagining that's going to be the white yarn in between that's actually fluorescing. I'm going to rearrange it more like this, right? Okay. So you ready? So that, so that we can see, we've got our light section over here, we've mm -hmm. got our dark section over here, and we can see how it looks. You ready? Three, two, one. You ready, Chad? I'm ready. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, and it's even modeled, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, what I find interesting is, remember, this here, yeah. this side, this is a side that, in just regular light, this looks brown. Mm -hmm. But look at the color. There's some orange in there. Yeah. Possibly, possibly a little bit of yellow there. Mm-hmm. 
This is, of course, is our side where we don't have any of the black, so it fluoresces really good. But I was just, I was shook at the color change that in daylight, this whole section looks brown. But under a black light, we get these just amazing, gorgeous colors. To knit something for your next rave. I've never been to a rave. Have you checked the swatch yet? I haven't because that takes two hands. But yeah, see? Mm -hmm. And here you can see that it's not black all the way across. We get those same really cool colors. It's just, that looks so cool, doesn't it? It does. Oh, that is just awesome. So see, colors, brown, colors, brown, that's just, now if you have the fluorescent light on, the, the black light on, in with the lights on too, you can see that, yeah, it brings out those colors and you lose that brown. And that's just, I just think that is very cool. I don't entirely know what's going on, but I'm guessing that, you know, it looks brown like this because we've got that black mixed in there with it, but it's a mix where we've got individual strands that are dyed with the black, individual strands that are dyed with the fluorescent color, and there's not enough of that black to overwhelm them. And just the way it's all dyed, yeah, with the UV light, black's not going to fluoresce or anything, and it's not dark enough um so that we get to see the fluorescing of the fluorescing colors and i just i love it i just i love this whole mystery surprise yarn color of it i just i think it's cool y'all <laughs> i'm so glad that we did this yeah sometimes these spur of the moment things give us really really cool results Anyway, I hope y'all really enjoyed watching us dye this unexpected skein of yarn with just some leftover fluorescent dyes. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, hit that like button, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now and turn on notifications so that you don't miss when we release the video where we dyed the original yarn that gave us the leftover for this one and all of the other videos in the 2022 Halloween Mega Venture that's going to be coming up at the end of this month. Y'all have a fabulous day, and we will see you on our next adventure. Bye, everybody. Say bye, Chad. Bye, everybody. Bye. Party's over. Yarn doesn't have to stay here, but he can't go home. Yarn doesn't have to stay here, but it can't go home. Yep. <laughs> it's not how it goes. For yarn it is. <laughs> <laughs>